guys, welcome back to the Free Life Agents podcast. And once again, today, I have a very special guest and a really good friend of mine. Um, this person is very well, well knowledge in the financial world, as well as the real estate world. He's also a, a big proponent of teamwork. As you can see, if you are watching us from the uh, video feed from his love of dragon boats and his, uh, you know, as a semi-professional athlete, really <laughs> right there. Yeah. Love the dragon boats. But um, without further ado, I really want to introduce you guys uh, to my good friend, Sam Sith. Welcome to the show, Sam. Hey, uh, thank you for having me on here. Uh, first of all, I know I, you know, we, we, we got a chance to link up, right? Connected through LinkedIn. Uh, but, but, but really, I'm excited to, to really uh, share what, what we have to talk about today. Okay. So, yeah, no, I'm excited to have you on. I think you can offer really fresh perspective for the audience from your financial background. And um, so, I mean, would you, would you just do us the favor of, you know, introducing yourself to our audience, those who are not familiar with you, you know, what you do, what background you come from, uh, just tell us a little bit more about your journey uh, in the financial world and the entrepreneurial space as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, you know what? I got a degree in uh, computer information system back in 2003. Um, then I got into real estate in 2004, became a real estate license in the state of Georgia. So I mm -hmm. still hold uh, active uh, real estate license in the state of Georgia. Uh, then I jump into um, 2014, got a license in... Um, uh, in insurance, uh, personal finance, become a financial professional. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I know from, from being in IT and getting to the people business and getting to the team business, it's, it's, it's a very different feel and it's a lot of a learning journey for me too. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's a really interesting, uh, really interesting journey that you had. And I really want to kind of touch on, you know, just the beginning of it. And, um, you know, you getting into IT and how that kind of led to, led to you being an entrepreneur. I mean, was, you know, being in the, in the IT space, something that you wanted to do, you know, from a younger age, um, is that something that you wanted to do early? And is that how you got into the field? Uh, you know, it's interesting because I, I, you know, back when I was young and little boys and I, uh, I like to break things apart, uh, back then computer and all this stuff, you know, I, I just like that hand-on feeling and, that technical, always trying to replicate something, what I see and getting something to work. So that's how I got into IT. Um, and then again, you know, sometimes uh, what you want to do doesn't always uh, uh, align with what you, what's out there in the real world. So, um, and, and, and then uh, real estate start to present much, uh, itself, but I'm always an entrepreneur. Um, I've been a um, back, back even my teen in my early um my early 20 uh i used to be a club promoter too a nightclub oh. promoter you know so it's always like uh, i like to be in this entrepreneur entrepreneur mindset really uh, from the beginning so when i saw that opportunity oh. i was like you know what let me let me go ahead and pursue it on a uh, deeper level deeper level Wow, that's that's super interesting. So I didn't know that about you, but um, I know we're kind of getting a little bit off track here. But what was that like as a as a nightclub promoter? That must have been an interesting experience. Well, you know, sometimes we, we get to things uh, because you know I, I I like to have fun. Um, I like to uh, enjoy the entertainments and all stuff. And and that time at that time, um, you know, like import car import was very big scene. Uh, people soup up their car and all that stuff, which is another place to uh, collect it where people come. Um, and I say, well, you know what? Why not host a uh, after party? And that's what the idea was. And uh, again, like I said, I, I like the scene. You know, it's fun. Uh, so um, I say, why not make money and, and uh, be an entrepreneur at the same time? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That must have been a lot of fun, right? Just making fun. money and. Well, you know, fun and also stress, very stressed because uh, you don't know how's your night. It's just different. I think it's like back then was uh, we promoting a little bit differently, not a lot on online, but a lot on flyer. We would go from one shopping center to the next shopping center where demographic of that uh, area and, and push that out that way. So it's more like flyer to flyer. So, yeah. Yeah, direct marketing, I, right? <laughs> direct, yeah, that is direct marketing. A lot of a lot of skill that I mean, I think a lot of people, entrepreneurs these days, don't have. 
And, um, you know, some people have different opinions on whether if it's a good thing or a bad thing because mm-hmm. of the way the internet is presented it itself in, in a way where we can just market our information, market our products and services without having to develop those skill sets. But really what people find out is that, you know, after you get, you know, some, some marketing out there and you get people coming in, you still need those skill sets to actually be successful because as you know, being in the, you know, different, different events and different industry businesses, you know, real estate, and not just real estate, but business is a, is a relationship game. I mean, is that, is that something you kind of realize in the, in the beginning as you move cross, across different industries as well? Um, well, I, I start to realize that is at the end of the day, it's people. Um, it's people. Um, and it, it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, one of the things that you have to learn how to promote yourself, uh, promote being a good promoter, whatever you do. I mean, even yourself uh, getting a job or getting to a business, uh, that's one of the key things uh, is learning how to to promote yourself. And and then as I got into the industry, um, I realized, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about products. Uh, it's about people. Can can people trust you? You know, because product is basically everything is just behind the scene, you know, but first, your foremost is who you are, your face, your 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 voice, everything that that really define who you are not the product not the product itself so yeah exactly i'd have to agree on that i think something else to add on that is um your energy too so whether you know you're selling anything i don't i don't think it's you know necessarily the words that you say but it's the conviction behind your voice it's the conviction behind your energy and your belief systems and that's really what um what you're able to influence others if you actually believe that you're able to help them because if you don't and you're just trying to make a sale, that's completely different. You're bringing a completely different energy, a vibe to the table. And people can feel that. We might not be able to, to necessarily recognize it with our com- conscious mind, but we, we can feel that subconsciously. And then that's how, you know, really, you know, sales are made and how, how business is done. I mean, yeah, just, I, just yeah, I do go agree ahead. With you. Yeah, I, I do agree with you because a lot of time, uh, especially like you said, in relationship uh, business, uh, it's not a one-time transaction. You know, it's not like you go to buy a shoe and you don't like it, you return it. We're in a totally different ball game. We here, um, you know, like yourself and myself, real estate agent, and I'm also a financial professional, is that um, we build relationship because it's not, it's not uh, the things that we do require us to keep that relationship. And especially in financial industry, it required us to keep that relationship because it's not just a one time you, we, we do in a transaction, you walk away and you sign, you're done. No, a client can say, Hey, you know what? I don't like the way the plan worked. I want to change or I want to do something else. And it also, it affects us because what happened is the retention. You look at the retention. So relationship is so crucial, uh, retention, refer, um, getting more of, of a business because everything have to deal, like you said, relationship relationship that's so key that's so key yeah yeah and um and just to, i think you almost got almost got a little bit ahead of myself here but or, or a set of where our conversation is talking i think i took the note i think i took your note that I, people in your note <laughs> no no but it's great because we are going to touch on that i really do want to kind of compare that and, and see your perspective on comparing your experience in the real estate business and your experience in the financial space because like you said it's two very, uh, you know, they're both entrepreneurial and they're both in the sales space, but they're two different things in that in financial, there's a retention aspect. And, um, but yeah, just to kind of go back on things, you know, starting out as a, as a real estate agent, how was that like for you? Cause I, I know a lot of people out there listening to this podcast and um, a lot of uh, agents that I hear talk, you know, a big issue is how to get started in the industry. And from, you know, what I know about you is that you actually were able to get yourself started in the industry and, and do quite well in the first couple of years as well. So uh, if you don't mind, can you share some of that experience uh, with, with our listeners here, you know, how you were able to get started as a real estate agent and actually be successful, which is something that a lot of people seem to be struggling with. Well, you know, like any, any market, any products, anything else, uh, you have to start with the closest one, right? The people that you know, the people that you already have a relationship they just don't know what to do you know a lot of times people make it harder on themselves instead of you know like focus on the closest thing to them 
we tend to focus on the things that are really far away. So when you focus on something that's far away, yes, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some uh, some relationship building, and and you can't rush a relationship. And especially someone who invests um, their lifetime. I mean, uh, buying a house is the you know most of the time is is their biggest purchase in their life. You know, so it's it it have to do with trust. It have to do with more of a um, understanding level. So like myself, when I first started, um, my family was very crucial. Uh, my family, my community, uh, the, the, the people that you already know, uh, I would recommend people start from there, start from there, start from your brother and sister, your mom, your dad, and let them know, say, hey, look, you know what? I'm very excited. I, I just got uh, started with this, uh, with the real estate industry, and I just want to share with you. You know, and, and if, if you come to find out there's someone who need my service, I am here because they, they already have the relationship with you. They just don't know what you do. All right. They just don't know. Now they know what you do. It, it almost like you give them another antenna. When someone talk about real estate, they can always, hey, you know what? I have a brother that's doing real estate. You might want to talk to him. All right. So it, it gives that, uh, uh, that feeling of transition and referring uh, easier. To, to get started. But like I said, start from the people that you already have in your circle. Wow. Yeah, that's something that is so powerful. And it's something that I'm actually, um, I'm, I'm learning a little bit more right now as, as we have this conversation too, is that because so many people come into real estate or, or any business and they have big dreams and big goals. They want to reach a big audience. But really, like you said, the relationships where it starts and if you understand that principle, starting from the people around you, your community around you. That's what's going to get you to that next point as well. So, I mean, another thing that a lot of new agents struggle with and just on, on the same same topic is that they, they understand, right? Everybody talks about sphere of influence. Everybody talks about, you know, reaching out to the people that you already know, but they're they're afraid to do it. They're, there's something in, the, in a mental block where they think that they don't want to either offend or piss off that, you know, the people that they actually love and they love them. So, I mean, how did you overcome that in the beginning? Or is that, has that never been an issue? Because like we were talking about earlier, you just had so much conviction and belief in that you're actually providing a helpful service to the people that uh, you have a relationship with. Well, I would say, um, start with the story. Uh, people love to hear what got you started, right? Uh, I mean, we don't go to become, take a degree, become a real estate agent. Some way, somehow in our path, you might be in a career that for a while you say, hey, you know what, I want to get into real estate. So people like to hear your story. People like to say, you know what, this is how I got started. All right. So when you approach by sharing your story, this is how I got started with real estate. You're aware, you, you open yourself up to a very genuine way of reaching out to people. Right. And, and when they feel you and, 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 you know, they can connect with you. Uh, and, and a lot of times story is, we all know how to tell a story, right? We just don't tell it often enough, but the more you tell it, it it's, you start to feel better. Uh, you, you, know, you know, you take away the scripting, you take away all these things that, that really make, the, make it people so awkward, right? Uh, and that's what really hinder a lot of people because they're trying to kind of like stay in this line um, you know, it's, it's like you're driving and you're trying to stay in a lane, but, you know, on that one line, but if you just stay in your lane, you have more room to wiggle. And especially when you talk about your story, you know what? A lot of us don't have trouble to talk about our story. And, and once you start to feel good about yourself and, and you feel good about, and you, you start to build up your confidence more, this is how you overcome those little obstacles. You know, so and then you're going to get better and better. And, and at the end of the day, you build yourself up, you build yourself up and and just be more approachable to other people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Share your story. So that's something that's really important. I think yeah. people need to understand is instead of trying to just, you know, use scripts. I always tell the uh, agents that I talk to and the agents on my team, you know, you know, we have these scripts available for you, but don't don't ever use them word for word. This is just a guideline for what the way that you want to approach somebody, you never want to use this, the scripts word for word, because that's not authentically you. 
And you can't say those words. Uh, you can't say those words with the uh, conviction that you need to actually, you know, make the sale, build a relationship, and, and work with work with clients. So, yeah, because I mean, just just think about it. I mean, you call your brother, you call your mom, you call your cousin up in with the script it doesn't they they can smell it they can know it. that's not you sam you know you don't call me with uh, introduce yourself like that you know you, you just kind of like be natural and just really just uh excited to share that hey you know what i i i, I got into real estate i just passed my license i'm very excited i'm very excited getting started and i'm learning and and you show show yourself that you are learning because people love to help uh, don't you know? I think in the beginning you gotta show that you you're willing to learn, and and that uh, people and and ask people for help. Ask people for help. Uh, people love to help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's another big one is that you know agents they don't they don't ask people for help, and they're not and they're not asking the right people for help if they do, right? Because um, is that I mean is that something that you you realize as well? Is that the the point that you were trying to make? Is that it's not just okay to ask for help from, you know, other successful people in your space, but it's also okay to ask for help from, you know, potential clients. It's yeah. okay to ask for help from family and friends. And friends. And, and it's hard. It's hard for us to ask for help, right? Because we, we, we grew up differently. Every, every one of us, you know, have a different environment and, and you know, I, I remember myself, you know, asking for help was very hard, especially in my culture. And, you know, we learn how to be stand strong and firm and all this stuff. And, you know, you can do it and, you know, fight through that process. But the reality is that everyone need help. Everyone need help. And everyone also like to help others because they feel like they're contributing uh, to someone else's success. And, you know, even myself right now, I learned to how to let people know what what's my intention, you know, like for this month or where I plan, you know, sometimes it's what they're saying that you have to let the universe know what you want so that it can also give it to you. So that's the same way apply to what you want uh, out of uh, the people around you too. So. Wow. So, I mean, just to kind of touch back on the, what you said about, you know, you growing up and other people growing up with uh, specific cultures that might not, you know, you, you know, as you know, like, like it when people ask for help. So how did you kind of overcome that, right? If you come from that, that background, how did you learn to overcome that in your, your journey? It was not easy. It was not easy. Um, I, I look for everything. I, you know, I, I read a lot of book, I especially motivating and all that stuff. But right now, one of, one of the most important things that I start to understand, like hone in is really get to know myself, get to know myself better. Um, and, and once you get to know yourself better, you, you start to build a little bit more of a confidence in you. Each one of us, we are a mighty of our own self. We just don't know it, you know, and, and we, we tend to not express much, not to share much. I think everything you do, you think about it, there's a step, up, uh, almost like a step, stepping process of getting better and better every day. Even when you think about it, when you share a post on a social media, what you're doing, you're doing something that, that you're putting yourself in, in public and, and it could be good, it could be bad, but the thing is that you learn how to overcome that post. You know? and, and that's why people who post more or share more, they tend to get better at self-expression and start to live more, have a, have a stronger belief in themselves, have a stronger belief in themselves. Yeah. Right. So sharing, right. Is that yeah. something that you did in the beginning as well? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, back when you first started in real estate, social media probably wasn't as big as it, as it is now. <laughs> yeah. but... are, you, are, you, are you looking at my gray hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so, so for agents who to overcome the fear of sharing, um, do they, do you want to just um, kind of touch on, you know, should they just focus on themselves instead of what other people think? Is that what you did? And how, how are you able to kind of tune out the noise because there's a there's a lot of negative noise out there probably not as much as, as people think there is and that's something i'd be getting to realize as well but how how, do, how can people actually just tune out any negative noise as minimal as it may be or it can just be the the noise in their own head well i, I like you said it you, you 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 mentioned it very well you hit it on the on the nail basically the noise in the head um you know a lot of time even myself i'm i i was born as a you know i when I was young, I'm an overthinker. 
um, <laughs> you know, and, and even just the clothes. I remember going to school and in, 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 in school, in high school, like just, just really overthinker what I wear, what should I wear and all the stuff. So those little things, you see that there's a pattern in your life that you have to let go. You have to let go, right? You have to let go. Uh, because if you hold everything too much, that tension make you feel uneasy, right? And it, it make you feel uneasy. So um, I, I would just, you know, stepping stone wise, just really um, learn if it take just, I think the most important part is just, uh, are you feel good doing it, right? Yes, you have to overcome it. It's not going to be feeling good the first time you do it but you do it more, you do it more, you can only get better and better. And let people know, I mean, uh, I think I start to get better of expressing myself. Um, sometime after a run, I would record a video and I share, share from my thought, my feeling. And then, uh, you know what? No one really say any bad thing about it. And there's a lot of people getting benefit out of it. So sometime there's more benefit than the negative side effects. Uh, so, um, you know, you never know your message. Uh, you might feel that it's not as what you want it, but it could potentially help someone else on that day or that time when they, they, you know, reading your post. So yeah, don't, don't, I, don't think too much over your head. Just there you go. I think that was perfectly said, uh, uh, Sam. I think that was perfectly said is that a lot of times when we when we post content or um, you know we want to share something, we always think that uh, we want to make it perfect, right? We want to make it so that we think it's perfect. But whenever we we actually share the content, uh, we realize that there's always somebody in their journey that can actually benefit from the knowledge and the value that you're able to provide, right? It might not be you know the multimillionaire next door, but it could be somebody else who's one step behind you. Right in your in their journey of entrepreneurship, I remember this uh, this story. I think it was in a movie, where um you know this this guy was a as it was a con man, but mm -hmm. he was you know posing as a teacher, and then the only thing he did was he would read one page ahead every day in the textbook so that he would actually seem like he knows more, uh, so he can actually offer value to the students. So that's something that's um, I think we should all keep in mind is that there's always something that we can offer to the public. There's somebody out there that can benefit from from our story and from what we have to share as well. Yeah, so. I agree, I agree. <clears throat> yep, so kind of pivoting a little bit uh, onto the next phase of your, of your career and the next, you know, what you're doing now currently, your, your, real, your real passion is that, um, you know, you're currently in the financial space if, you know, for people that don't know, but, you know, how did that kind of come about, right? What was the, what was the process that got you introduced into finance and what you're doing now and away from real estate almost? Well, you know, um, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it started off, I, I'm, I'm always uh, looking for multiple sources of income. And, and when the opportunity presents itself and the platform and everything else, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and got diving a little bit deeper into the finance space and realized uh, most of us, especially myself, my parents and my family, didn't get a chance to really understand about personal finance and uh, and even my community and uh, you know and, and really start to dive in and that's where my passion stand is that you know I, I want to make a difference I want to to make impact in people life um, and that drive yes it's not easy you know it's not easy because we don't deal with a tangible products right in real estate we can give you a key to your house and you have that real estate asset. But here we're dealing with a lot of it. We give you a portfolio with a contract, with a promissory note, right? So it's, it's, it take a lot of more of effort um, um, on, on myself. Um, you know, we always have doubt and, and, and uncertainty, but, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, but again, going back to the financial education, it's not something that we was really taught uh, talk about and a lot of us don't like to talk about finance you know and, and uh, you know I mean people are just very secretive about uh, they go their own life through their own things until something happen it unravel everything that's when you realize that this person are not in good finance 
So, um, but we want to bring that out. We want to make this feel like a conversation where a friend will talk to another friend. You know, and it's like a football, like we had a Super Bowl last night. You know, wh why can't we talk about, you know, how we manage our money, how we spend our money? Uh, because it's, it's a healthy thing. It's a healthy thing. And what's interesting too is that, you know, over the weekend, I was in a, um, a political events thing and get to network with people. You know, this is also another practice of getting better with yourself, of getting to know people is that put you in an environment uh, that is uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, I met most of my friends, we, we hang out, we, we talk, we socialize, but we never really get a chance to really talk in a deeper level. So, and, and now the conversation is a little bit different, a little bit different, much more meaningful because you have more intention to help someone, intention to share, intention to really make an impact. Right. So that's something that's, I think that's interesting because like you mentioned earlier, you, you know, you understood the, the benefit and the power of building relationships, you know, when you were a real estate agent, but like you said, you know, selling real estate, people can actually see the tangible asset where, you know, in the financial space, it's something a little bit less tangible. People are actually less comfortable talking about it, you know, as surprising as it is. And as, as, you know, unfortunate as it is not a lot of people like to talk about money and, and, and wealth which is, um, you know, if you don't talk about it, it's not going to show up in your life. Yeah. So um, that's, that's a lesson that, uh, that people need to learn. But kind of, you know, touching on your experience, you know, how are you able to kind of almost bring your level of building relationships and bring your level of communication from just selling real estate to the financial space to another level? So how did you upgrade your skill sets and upgrade your relationship uh, skills so that you can actually bring that next level of service to your clients? Well, read more, right? Read more. I, I think it doesn't matter what you do. You gotta, you have to shop your skill. Um, even you're a blacksmith, you gotta keep shopping that tool, whatever it is. Um, yes, you, you can equip yourself with a tool, but the most important part is how are you using that tool? Um, so the more you know, the more you understand, uh, the better, the, the, the better you are, uh, uh, the, the much more confidence in you. Uh, it give you that feeling of uh, kind of like a strong feeling. So I, I, like you said, it, it's, it, to me, it just get better, whatever field you're in, especially in finance. I, I read a lot. I, 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 I you know, keep up with the, the news, especially in, in any changes because, you know, pandemic and, 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 you know, in 2020 and, and where people have to shelter in place, you know, and most people have no way of understanding the importance of finance, you know, and that's when they realize that there's no more paycheck coming in to pay their bills and take care of their family. That's when they realize that, you know what, um, we didn't have our foundation built on the right path, right? So that's why, that's one of the key thing is that, um, and people want to learn, people want to learn and, and, and just to me, uh, approach people with the education aspect instead of approaching it from, you know, the, 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 the jargon number and say, hey, you know, with this, that, and people, they don't really care. They care how much you care for them, right? They don't exactly. care about the product. They just care how much you care for them. And, and they, at the end of the day, whatever you present to them, they just want to make sure that it worked for them, that the money they pay for, that it worked for them. So that's why I learned how to, from a technical from a technical mindset, I have to learn how to be a human, uh, talking to another human being, not talking to another agent, right? So talking to a human being, uh, uh, you know, that they not in this field, they just want to know, look, I pay this much, what am I, what am I, what am I getting out of it? That's all exactly. they want to know, right? So I learned how to, to really simplify myself and just to be simple, to be simple. Wow, yeah. People, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. Yeah. So that's, that's something that, that's really interesting that you just mentioned. You simplified yourself. You, instead of overcomplicating it, I think Albert Einstein said that, you know, it takes a, you know, any fool can make a simple idea very complicated, but it takes a genius to take something complicated and simplify it. So that's something that um, people need to really think about. 
um, simplifying their ideas, not making it as, as complicated as possible. Um, right. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, Sam, um, you know, you mentioned that you like to read. So, I mean, what's your favorite book, man? What's your favorite book that, that you like to read either on business or personal development or, or finance? Well, you know, I mean, like you see book here and, you know, that's, that's, that's my, my go-to book. Right. Um, but, um, but to be honest with you, I, I don't have a favorite. Um, I, I, I kind of like, because reading is kind of keep you, um, keep you see reading to me is, is you, all of us can read an article a post and all that stuff, but reading a book is allow you to dive in a little bit deeper. Um, yes, think and grow rich is always, it's not a reading book, but a book that I always go back to section, you know, um, you know, even talk about the different knowledge, the different thing is just going back. And sometimes we, there's a certain book that you read, you just from front to back. Right? And there's a certain book that you read when the moment you open that page, that page talking to you, right? Or you open this section and that section and, and you keep that book referenced to you all the time because every time you open it, it give you kind of like an answer, you know? So again, I, I think to me, like thinking grow rich is always like, you know, I, I even have a on audio too. So where I, I listen to, uh, um, you know, all the time. And because again, like I said, it's not something that there's certain book, like I said, read from front to back. Some just want to keep it as a reference. So. Wow. Yeah. I think, I think great books have an energy to them, right? You want to surround yourself with great books because the words on the page, they create an energy to you. It's not necessarily the, the exact logistical information that they're giving you, but it's like you said, when you open it, when you touch it, when you look at it, it kind of gives you, it just gives you the answer to, to answer, what you're looking yeah. for. Answer you're looking for. And sometimes you're looking for answer somewhere else, but a lot of time it's like, it might be in front of you. You just have to pick it up. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Going back to the simplification thing, right? You're, you're looking at, you know, looking so far ahead, but it's, it's right in front of you. Right and um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, in the financial space for, for real estate agents, I mean, you know, obviously you're, you're kind of doing both right now uh, at, at the same time, but, you know, for, you know, real estate professionals, you know, how did that kind of transition uh, go for you? And um, what, what is something that I think, you know, you can really offer on in terms of what are what are real estate agents and real estate professionals can, uh, can learn from, you know, in their own personal finance, and um, what you've learned as well in your own journey, can you, you know, if you don't mind kind of sharing that with, with everybody here? Yeah, well, uh, the most, the first step, take an interest in your personal finance. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Um, a lot of us, you know, we might pay a bill, uh, we think we would check our balance on our, you know, bank app or whatever. We think we're fine. Um, you know, we put money away into a retirement account. We think we're okay because we put the money away. First of all, take a moment out, out even like take a moment every day. Pay attention to uh, um, your personal finance. How is your spending habit, right? What is your, what is your habit? Are you, are you a spender or are you a savior? right? Take an interest of, uh, are you keeping most of your money? Are you paying, or you have to, to really uh, uh, pay at the end of the year? Okay. And then when we talk about retirement, you know, do you know, can, can you retire, right? Do you know the number, the, you know, the number of your retirement number, meaning that, uh, you know, do you need 2 million, 5 million? Are you on track? Are you saving enough to be on track. Whatever you do, you have to really understand. And another important thing I, I can't say more is protect yourself. Protect yourself. Uh, we believe that no matter how good you are, if you don't take care of yourself uh, um, from health, uh, uh, you know, from health and, and, and to even uh, um, insurance and all that stuff, it's very important because what is the moment that you cannot, especially as a real estate agent, do you have a plan for income protection, right? Like what if you disable, what if you cannot jump in the car and open the key and show people house? How, where's, where's your next paycheck coming from? How are you gonna take care of your bill, right? So disability income, uh, disability protection is very important. And then we also talk about health. What if you're premature, you know, chronic cancer, cancer stroke, anything that could happen, right? 
And the last thing is your life, your life, you know, and, and protecting your life is so crucial because sometimes, you know, I have young people getting declined uh, life insurance because they think they're healthy. And the moment we apply and, and they assess the, the need and assess the, the, the risk, they didn't know what they didn't know because they never got checked check up on it so it's very crucial and, and sometimes you know as a protection they don't they they're not just looking at your health but also look at your mental health mental health and if you have a site history and all that stuff that's going to affect on your risk so um it's very crucial and now they uh, um you know what happened in 2020 and you know 2021 and people around us you hear that got affected by COVID 19 or die from COVID-19, um, it's not a joke. It's, it's something that we have to really pay attention to and, and, and take an interest. I think the most, at the end of the day, take an interest of building a strong personal financial foundation for yourself and for your family. Exactly. Something that a lot of real estate agents, especially young, successful ones, the, co the combination between the two is, is deadly, but <laughs> especially young ones, successful ones, or both, um, they don't think about their future, in my, in my opinion. I don't think they're not thinking about, you know, how much they can make in the future. They're just thinking about how much they can keep today. Um, real estate agents, uh, you know, something that isn't talked about enough is that real estate agents cannot retire. There is no retirement plan for realtors, not, not today you know, not ever. And there has never been a plan for realtors to retire. They have no 401k. There's no employer matched um, retirement plan. They don't own any equity. Their entire business is based on their own performance and they don't have health insurance. So they're not insured. So real estate agents and even, even team leaders and big broker owners, you know, they're, they're in the same boat. You know, they're not, it's not just that, you know, the individual real estate agent, if you're a, if you're a broker owner, you have the same issues. You might be making a little bit more money you know, maybe not because that's something that actually another topic of conversation, but you might be making a little bit more money, but you're still not insured. You're not looking at what your life looks like in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You know, as we, you know, something, a statistic that I heard about on another podcast the other day is that for now, you know, every year that we stay alive, we're able to stay alive another three more years or I think another three more months, I think, but I, I don't remember uh, exactly what it was, but we are living longer now and we need to plan for that. So, I mean, you, I mean, you know, obviously know this more, you know, better than anybody else, but you know, for people who are making a lot of money, who might not be, you know, they don't want to hear it, right. <laughs> they're making money, they're successful, but what would you tell these people right now who are doing really well, they're really well off, but they're not looking far enough into the future and they're not seeing that there is no exit plan, especially in residential real estate. What would you tell these people? Well, I would tell them, learn how to protect your wealth. Okay. Uh, I know right now, uh, you know, I just got a, a article from, from realtor, uh, um, you know, and, and talk about uh, Google uh, is uh, um, real estate agent is like right now ranking pretty high, you know, because people are thinking about getting to real become real estate. And, and I see also in my social media too, where uh, my peer are getting to real estate. Right, and, and it's a very fun, exciting career. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of growth. See, a lot of time we, we, we focus on growth, on, on wealth, but we don't focus on protecting our wealth. Protecting our wealth from predator, predator, all those things. Those are important. We in a business of high risk. Anyone can sue us. We live in a country, anyone can sue you. Okay, one, one thing can wipe you out right? One lawsuit can wipe you out. One trip to the hospital can wipe you out, you know, and, and especially the way that the cost of, of, of medical uh, hospital and all those things, it really can wipe you out. It doesn't matter if you have a million or two million, it can wipe you out very easily. Okay. So learn how to protect your asset. That's the key thing. Yes. You know, when you make money, you should save more money, you know, leverage that time to, to put more money away and protect that money. doesn't matter what the market is doing. Um, you know, you can make sure that they protect the downside. If the market go up, great, you enjoy it. But what if the market go down? You gotta have a plan that can also protect the downside. So, and tax advantages, right? Learn how can, how can you keep more of your money? 
how can you keep more of your money? So those four things, whatever plan you do, yes, enjoy the growth, protect the downside, understand about taxes, and then at the end, protection. So those are four key. When we approach our client, we always focus on four uh, cornerstones in, in their planning. Um, so they can sleep well at night. So they don't have to worry about, um, you know, where's my money gonna come from in my retirement. And also as, as, a, as an agent, real estate agent, um, you know, take a look, uh, take a look at uh, your social security. Your social security is very important because a lot of time we can claim a lot, we can reduce our income and all that stuff because our um, expenses and all that stuff, but are you putting enough earning into your social security why, you know, you may think that you're going to have some kind of income from there, but take a look. And right now you can go to ssa.gov and create an account and see where your projection is at. So don't wait because time, if, you know, time is, you know, you can build wealth when you have quick money, but another way people build wealth is through time. It's through time. So. Well, that is powerful, Sam. I think this is this is such an important topic. I mean, that's, there's a, it's probably the reason why I started this podcast in the first place. Um, this show is called the Free Life Agents Podcast, and uh, we're just helping real estate agents build a real estate, you know, build a lifestyle, not not a business, but build a yeah. lifestyle that they can actually um, they can enjoy and they don't need a vacation from. That's the tagline that that we have. It's not just the tagline that we made up. We're Absolutely. seriously, <laughs> seriously, we're trying to help agents live free, fulfilled lives where they're not having to worry, they're not having the stress. You know, real estate agents are probably the most stressed people in the world and, um, you know, build an actual lifestyle that don't, they don't need a vacation from. And that is what so many successful entrepreneurs in the real estate space don't understand is that they're having these big incomes. But like you said, one trip to the hospital, COVID, one lawsuit can wipe your entire income out and it will be really difficult to recover from that and you know they say right the, the you know the bigger they are the harder they fall so you know the more successful you are the less you want to hear it and the more you know important it is for you to actually start thinking about how you're protecting the lifestyle that you've created and how you can actually one day go enjoy it and not have to stress about maintaining it and bringing that income in but for for the people that i mean that just don't want to hear it for the people that out there that just are so, you know, uh, I guess over the, over the subject and they, they think they're so successful. What is one thing that you would tell them right now to um, potentially change their minds or at least plant a seed where they can actually start thinking about, you know, what if something happens? What would you, what would you tell them? I mean, it, it's so hard to get, get through to those people. I understand it's so hard, you know, when you're successful it's to get that information, that thought through. But if anybody can do it, I think, I think you can. And I think, you're able to, to, you know, share this on our, on our show. And if even one person hears that we're able to protect one person and their family, uh, we're going to do it. So what is one thing you would tell them? Well, uh, one thing is, is, is take one day or you know, I, I don't see, we do financial, we do our health checkup every year, right? Uh, most people, right? Most people, we do health checkup every year, but how many people out there really do financial checkup every year? So the first thing is that, Hey, Check up, take inventory of all your finance, right? Take, take inventory of your asset, take inventory of your liability, take, in, take inventory of your spending habit. Where's your monthly income? How are you budgeting? Or, or what is it that you really have in place? Take inventory of it. Because this is going to give you a picture of what is your finance look like when you start to take pictures when you start to take inventory. See, a lot of times people don't, don't, don't pay attention to the inventory. They just know what's coming in, what's going out on the back door, but they don't know what's in the house, what's in the warehouse or what's in, the, in, in, in that, that, that space. So that's the first thing. And, and the moment you realize that, how am I building my foundation? Do I build it from the ground up or do I build it from the roof first, right? So your foundation, that's a slab or whatever, you got to make sure, do you have it in place? So, um, but yeah, I mean, simple thing is take inventory of your money. 
Wow. Yeah. And this is an important point. It really is. And the, like I said, you know, the more successful you are, the more important it is for you actually to take, take a look at what, what's going on in your business right now. Can you actually remove yourself from the business today, right now at this moment and still be making that income? Or, you know, if you remove yourself from the equation, does the entire empire you've built collapse to the ground? Right. I think that's something that people really need to think about. And um, I did actually write an article on this on my blog uh, not too long ago. And I will leave, leave the link to that below for anybody who is uh, interested in learning more about uh, about this and this topic and how realtors right now are actually in a, in a financial situation where it's almost dire and um, how uh, you can actually solve this problem as well. But um, really, you know, thank you for offering that the, the advice, Sam, and, you know, being able to share with people. Uh, the importance of building, building a financial foundation, especially as somebody who is a, a, a top earner or somebody who's earning a lot of money as well. But, you know, moving on to something probably a little bit more fun, a little bit less, uh, you know, a little bit less stressful for people to think about. But, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, you like to do, like we mentioned earlier that you're, you know, you're a dragon boat, you know, I'll, I'll say athlete, right? You're a dragon boat athlete. And one of the things that we talk about a lot, and you tell me is that it really helps you build, um, your teamwork. And I just kind of want to have you talk a little bit more about, you know, your journey with, you know, Dragon Boat and um, how that has helped you develop into a better person, a better entrepreneur, and how to develop, you know, your skill sets and working with other people and your teamwork abilities. Well, um, you know, I, I got introduced uh, into the Dragon Boat back in 2007, 2007, really. Um, and this is from a friend and hey Sam, you know, uh, come over to the lake and this is like Lake Lanier and, you know, check it out and we have a sport and, you know, at first the attraction was, well, I'll go there and they have good food and all that. That's, that's my attraction, right? <laughs> um, and, and, uh, I got into it and, uh, and Dragon Boat is 22 people in a boat. So you have the drummer, you have the, the, uh, the steerman and you have the people, who paddling, we call it, we call it paddler. Um, so 20 of paddler. And uh, it's all about the beat of the heart. That means the beat of that uh, drum. Uh, so everyone have to be in sync. Uh, so it's teamwork, pure teamwork, right? Um, and then one of the key thing is that we realize is to keep it simple because um, in, this, in this sport, every year we have to recruit new people. Every year we have to recruit new people, but the most important part is that we have four or five core people in the team um, that can always stay and, and then rebuild. Because again, when you have a team sport, every year you build and rebuild, build and rebuild, and you see the you know you you see it in the NFL team or you know NBA and all that stuff. It's you, you can't if you're uh, you know, but no matter what. You keep doing that and doing that and the new leadership is very important and so i always see that you have to have five six people in your organization that that really have the same mindset as you and no matter all the people around you leave but there's those five four or five people stay you can always rebuild um and from that is is develop teamwork and and develop a community i think right now we don't look at it as just a team but more of a community that have uh, the same uh, winning spirit that have the same, uh, uh, um, you know, passion. And, you know, now we, we, we kind of like that community of, of people uh, that, that we can really win. If, if we win, yes, great. If we didn't win, try again, right? <laughs> try again. So we've been, you know, and, and we became uh, in 2015, we became uh, a championship team. Uh, and, you know, after many, many try, you know, so again, I learned that if you fail, it just, you only learn how to, to get better, to be better next time. That's it. Because it's teaching you to be better and better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, but take passion, whatever you do, don't take it as, as a, as, as that, oh, I, I, I have to do it. No, take it that enjoy the process because when we practice every Sunday uh, morning, you know, from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not fun, right? But at the same time, uh, it is the feeling that you, uh, you, you enjoy. You get to see the people um, that you care about, 
um, not just the sport. Uh, you, you get a chance to make new friends. Um, you get to understand, you, get, you also get a chance to understand the culture of each and every one of them because our team are very diverse. Um, you know, so um, yeah, it's no matter what, wow. let's keep going. Wow, uh, I think I think I need to be introduced to the, to the sport of Dragon Boat. Uh, you know, Sam, maybe maybe you need to recruit me to, to your team. Uh, but but you you're you're over in Georgia, so that oh, might be an issue. Did, uh, they they got some uh, some team in 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 Texas too. Yeah, What's yeah, I know. Yeah, I was uh, I was I was actually for you know now that you bring it up, I was looking into this because um like like you know some people know this, some people might not know this, but I'm I'm a big. Uh, team person so I mean we're, we're really similar in that Sam is that I love working with teams I love building teams and I love doing anything with other people and not just by myself uh, and you know I've always been like that I always say that you know it doesn't really matter what we're doing but as long as I'm doing something with you know like I said a couple of people that I really enjoy it doesn't matter what we, we, we're doing we could be going to the movies shopping you know building a business you know doing a, you know playing basketball we well, suck at basketball but I just really enjoy being around the right people. And that's, that is something that I'm really passionate about is, you know, working in, in groups, working in teams, having lots and lots of friends. That's, there's a reason why I'm, I'm doing this podcast, getting, getting to know new people as well. But um, yeah. And then something more practical that you touched on earlier, uh, you know, build and rebuild. So you're in the team, you know, in organization building space, I'm in that same space as well in real estate. Um, you know, I really kind of want to expand on that as something, uh, you know, we can kind of touch on and, and finish with is the build and rebuild process and expand on what you've said about, uh, you know, keeping your core people because people come and go, but keeping your core people and how to bring that core into something massive that is life changing and overreaching in the entire world. Yep. Yep. Well, um, I mean, you know, like anything, you know, I, even my business and the sport, I learn. It's not, it's not something that I know right away. It just uh, through experience, and that's why I value experience. Um, and and reading is great, but when you put yourself in experience yourself and you learn from yourself, uh, this is where you start to take practice. Uh, uh, you know, from what you learn and you apply it, and you start to see what's worked for you. What's worked for you. Um, and, and any business, it doesn't matter. I, I think to me, team building is everywhere. You know, um, even my, in my family, if you look at the hierarchy in the family and everything else, uh, I am the oldest right now. I'm the oldest cousin, but how can you bring the, the family together? Right. So, so that is with your own team. That's, I think to me, I consider that as a team itself too. Um, so, so it's really, um, don't wait until you say I have a team uh, because the team don't come from other people. The team come from you first. You do it first. That's how you develop a team. So people think, that, oh, I'm going to wait until I have a team. I said, well, who's going to build the team for you? Who's going to bring the team for you? Right? Even, even you have a team, they, if they, someone give, give you a team, you probably won't know how to keep the team. But the team start from you first. Uh, and that's very important part of building a team. You get, it start from you. So, wow. That is such a powerful statement, Sam. I mean, that is, I think everybody needs to just take out a pen and paper and write that down. You know, anybody who's in the, in the entrepreneurial space, um, you know, the team doesn't come from outside. The team comes from within. That is yeah. so powerful. And, um, you know, like you said, start with, start with family. You know, I always say, and I'm sure you're the same way, you know, you know, I say that my team is my second family and I'm sure, you know, you, you think that as well. And every successful team builder entrepreneur out there should think that too. So, I mean, start picking out ways that, you know, you can, you can actually improve yourself, fail forward and see, you know, what you can take from your daily life, from your family life and bring that into your, your business as well, because you should treat your business, the associates, your partners, and your, you know, if you have employees, your employees like a second family. You know, almost even, you know, sometimes I enjoy spending time with my second family more than my first family. <laughs> That's a different story. Uh, but um, so, so, yeah, Sam, I mean, really excited to have you on today. I mean, this was an awesome podcast. I knew we were going to do great. And um, it really actually exceeded my expectations as well. So as high as those were, um, it, it went even better. But for those who are looking to reach out to you, who want to learn more about what you do, 
And, um, or if you want people to find you on social media, where can people find you? Um, and what's the best way to reach you? Well, um, I, I have a, a landing page um, because I use every social media out there, pretty much Instagram. I have TikTok too, but I have, I'm not very <laughs> active on there because it takes so much time just to make one TikTok video. So, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm almost um, every um, a social media channel. Um, but you can, um, I have a, a landing page called Sam. Um, so basically just goes S-A-M, Sam dot learning never stop dot com. Um, and this will give you kind of like a, a, a kind of like a, a portal to my various things from real estate. I have my, you know, my, my landing page for the real estate and for our uh, financial education workshop. Uh, we do have workshop from Monday through Friday. Um, twice a day, uh, just to really bring this awareness to people. Hey, take a moment to take a look at it. And, you know, I mean, at least you give it a try. Uh, you know, you like it, you don't like it. If it's not for you, whatever it is, at the end of the day, we want to help people who want to help themselves. That's the key thing is that we can't help everybody. And if they don't want to be helped, it's okay. You know, we're not going to force the cow to drink if it's not ready to drink. <laughs> You know, so, um, but yeah, I, I look forward to, to reach, you know, to, to contact with you guys and, and say hi. And I look forward to, to this uh, podcast uh, to be released. And, and, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yep. Thank it's you so much. Thank you for having me on here, Kobe. <laughs> no, no. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this, Sam. I think you offer a very unique perspective and a very important point that um, we touched on today, which is, you know, building your financial foundation, protecting your wealth, not just building it. And it's so important because it, it is life changing and it's also life saving, which is um, what people don't really think about. But I will put your information and um, anything else that any other way that anybody can reach you if they want more information down in the show notes uh, below. But thank you so much, Sam, for being on this podcast, guys. If you're listening to this, if you're a real estate professional, if you know a real estate professional, if you just know anybody who's making a lot of money, um, please share this with them. This is important stuff that we're talking about today. This is can be, like I said, life-changing or life-saving. And um, if you are watching this on YouTube, wherever you might be listening to this, audio form, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, give it a like, review, subscribe, and follow us. And um, turn your notifications on for the uh, next episode as well. But Sam, thank you so much for being on this podcast. And I look forward to you know speaking with you again and possibly having you on this podcast again. I think we can uh, we can really expand on some of these ideas in the future. But thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you in our next episode. Take care, guys.